So anybody that knows me well will know that I like to tinker. If something isn't quite as well, working as well as I want, or if I can see a way to improve it, then I'll usually give it a go and try and improve it. The most brilliant thing about our caravan, but also the bit that causes the most grief, is the upstairs. It's absolutely brilliant because it means we're lower than usual on the road, so it's easier to tow and more aerodynamic, and also much, much smaller than any conventional five or six berth caravan out there. But it suffers the same issues as all canvas sided pop tops. It's not very thermally efficient, it can be quite bright up there, especially on midsummer early mornings. And the thing which drives me absolutely bonkers is that when you get slight drizzle or mist, so the sort of stuff that you can't otherwise hear, um, the moisture falls away down the diagonal roof, coming out of the rain channels in the sides, in an absolutely incessant water torture-esque drip, drip, drip. And of course, as the flat bit of the roof onto which these drips fall is directly over the rear fixed bed, it's me who's kept awake all night long by it sometimes. So inspired by the roof caps available for much smaller camper van pop top roofs, I thought I'd have a go at making my own for this enormous bed on our caravan. I had some outdoor UV proof uh, strong and lightweight performance fabric left over from the garden sales project, so I thought I'd give it a go myself rather than sending hundreds of pounds and measurements off to one of the camper van roof topper manufacturers. We're lucky enough on this caravan to have a double awning rail on both sides, so my plan is to use the upper side of the rail to secure the roof topper, leaving the lower part of it ready for any awnings. Although I've measured, this is very much going to be a, a case of trial and error, and fit and refit and adjust and so on, to get the design right. So follow along and see if I succeed. So what you've been watching for the last couple of minutes is me cutting a diagonal piece for each side, with a single long straight piece that goes from back to front. I've left a square hole where the skylight goes, and I've sewn a Kedar strip onto each of the lower halves of the sides, and put some webbing loops onto the front and the back to take a piece of thin black PVC conduit, around which I can then secure some camper limpets or so on, if needed to stop it flapping about at the back of the front in any high winds. So once the rough shape is mocked up, we try it out. <laughs> to try and fit the uh, pop top cover in our tight parking spot but luckily we headed to a CL a week or so later. So in terms of fitting into the awning channel that strategy worked pretty well. You'll have seen that the CL which is at the top of a hill was pretty breezy though so at first I couldn't get the front flap into the correct position but luckily I'm able to climb up the internal ladder and squeeze the top half of my torso through the roof light uh, so things can be rearranged from up there. You'll see that I haven't done anything to secure the front or the rear to the sides themselves because at this point I was hoping to be able to leave them open to maximise the airflow and also to make it as easy as possible to fit everything and, and slide it into the two uh, awning rails, the front and the back simultaneously. Talking about fitting, you also will have seen me use a long strap attached to the rear bracer bar to uh, drag that piece over the top of the roof which sticks up quite a lot actually so it's a bit difficult to get things over there especially at uh, uh, whatever it is, 2.2 meters up in the air, even stood on a set of uh, steps is pretty tricky, so that brace of bar helped quite a lot. So the conclusions from test one were that the topper was pretty easy to fit, although rather like trying to handle a large sail in a strong gale at times. It also flapped around terribly at night and kept everyone awake. So when we got home, the next improvement was to close up those gaps between the front and the side pieces, and the same on the rear. Because the angles were a little bit tricky, I put the topper on and then pinned the additional panels into place in situ. Then we retested and hit a bit of a problem. So the topper was a much tighter fit, but still going on. But once on there, it still flapped about in the slightest breeze, just like the polyester tent that it was. And it didn't really do that much to lessen the water torture noise during drizzle. So frustratingly, it was back to the drawing board. Then I got inspired by the other sort of uh, camper van pop top insulation, the, the padded stuff that goes around the bellows themselves. I knew though that fitting something around the bellows wouldn't work for us if I had to fit it solo with just the kids for help. And I also knew that of course that would mean carrying a huge stepladder everywhere and wouldn't help with the water issue. But the idea to pad the inside of the topper seemed a good one. Certainly something that I thought would be helpful for cutting down on the, the flapping noise in the slightest breeze. 
The company I bought the quilted microfiber from that I used for the boys upstairs bed divider also sold a very similar thing in a waterproof version. So I got a sample of that and set about testing whether that absorbed more or less water than the microfiber version or indeed a, a piece of micro fleece. I also tried spray gluing the fabrics onto foil insulation in case that would help keeping everything more rigid and thus making the installation easier. So the conclusions from these couple of experiments were that the quilted waterproof fabric both absorbed the least water and would also be the lightest overall, but that gluing foil in between the outer and the inner layers of fabric just wouldn't make the whole thing impossible to handle. Now of course there's the realisation that adding this extra layer of fabric would make the whole thing impossible to corral through the, a normal domestic sewing machine, so I made it into a three-piece modular system. The front, top and rear as one single uh, rectangular piece, and then each side as a shaped piece. I also added perforated airflow fabric at the triangles where the front and the back meet, the sides, and then the three individual pieces were secured together with really strong Velcro. The thinking behind this was that um, in the summer the, the hefty long front top and sides piece could be replaced by a, a much thinner sheet of cotton, making the whole thing much easier to handle. Okay, so it's Rooftopper version 3 to the test. And that's pretty conclusively impossible single-handed. And the boys are at school, so I can't even rope them into helping. There are two key issues here. The first is the really annoying disconnect between the two different bits of the awning rail on the door side. So every time I try and fit something into this channel, it just gets stuck. There was a disc of tape here uh, tidying up the join when we bought the caravan, but inevitably that got full of gunk and is no longer properly in place. I'll have to try some T-Rex tape or something in the future. When the caravan went in for its last service, the dealership did try and close the gap, uh, but unfortunately without any success. Um, because of the weight of the topper, it keeps slipping down the rail, and of course single-handed you have to keep running from one side to the other side to the other to keep pushing it up through both rails. So construction and design-wise, I'm really happy with the, the finished design, uh, but realistically it's not manageable single-handed well, by me at least, and so it's back to the drawing board for upstairs insulation and light blocking. And that will be the topic of the next video in this little series. So for now, thanks for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that, and bye for now. <laughs>